Hey everybody, welcome back to the chaotic little book corner. I'm not in my usual spot, and I'm not going over there because I don't want to get out of bed right now. Um, it's Monday evening, I just finished therapy, <clears throat> and a extra appointment where I have to talk more about my own freaking disability and how I'm unable to function and how I need help because I'm unable to function as a human. And that's fine. I've, I've come to terms with my diagnosis. I've come to terms with my mental illness. I, I know what I have. I know that it's going to be a lot of work to get past it. I'm going to take my glasses off because I'm reflecting. And I've promised you guys that I will be honest with you. And I can't say I promise to share the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I'm going to show you the bad right now. And if you want to see the ugly, we can do that eventually. But you you guys tell me if you want to see the ugly. Because that's, that's something I don't want to push on you guys. You guys are always asking me about what it's like to live with mental illness on a day-to-day -day basis. What's my daily life like? What's my daily life like? What do I do in my day-to-day -day life? So, I'm going to start a segment. I'm going to start a new series. I won't do it constantly. Um, it'll come up once in a while. And what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to pick a tiny little subject that everyone has in their life on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm just going to talk about what my experience is with mental illness and that tiny little experience of what you guys deal with and I deal with on a daily life. So today I had to go in and talk to somebody and tell them why I need help again, why I have to see a certain doctor, tell them my story again. Well, even if you've ever been somebody who's had to go to doctors regularly, you know the pain it is to go into a doctor and tell them your story again and have them listen to it and have them give you a spin on it and you be like, listen, I've heard what you have to say. I know what you're going to tell me. You're not listening. <laughs> you're not listening. Today I had a very sweet old lady and uh, she's very, very not aware. Mind you, my hair is disgusting. Like this is crisis. Well, not crisis, but this is, this is coping. <laughs> um, she was very sweet, but she didn't know much about DID and therefore she got uncomfortable because that's what people do when they realize that they're talking to somebody with multiple personalities or alters. It's parts. It's first of all, it's parts. I'm not some cuckoo who has a person living inside me named Steve who's going to come out and kill you. That's not a real thing. Steve's not going to hurt anybody. Steve is probably a terrified little child who's afraid that you're going to hurt him. Most of my parts are more afraid of you than you are of them. So two years ago, I was living with a boyfriend in a three-year-long committed relationship on my own, cooking, cleaning, grocery shopping, keeping a 40 hour a week job, functioning normally. And I don't know what happened, but suddenly a cyst ruptured in one of my ovaries. And I don't know if you've ever had an ovary cyst rupture. It's, 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 it's excruciatingly painful. And the way that my body works is when I experience pain, it disassociates. So I started going to doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor, which finally led me to a psychologist. Now, this psychologist saw me about two weeks after my now ex began the breakup process with me. And I mean began it. Um, he told me to leave the house. He told me that he needed space and time to think and he needed to see so many different 
there were so many different stories that I heard from that, that, that world to talk about. But anyway, so I go to a psychologist. She prescribes me medication and sends me to a therapist. And I begin with him, and he diagnosed me with DID. And now, here we are. But, but during those two years and the time before that, my support system was my parents and at the time my boyfriend and before that I would have a friend and before that another friend and I'm I'm somebody who very closely attaches myself to people um I'm very used to being left um I'm very used to being accused of lying I'm very used to being accused of flakiness um I had one friend Sam who is still my friend and she moved away which was heartbreaking to me like she was such my she was such a support system to me um and she's married and I don't expect her to call me daily because it's not her job but she still supports me and still loves me and I know she does I have my friend Stevie who lives across the country and she loves me like a sister and I know that and she'd do anything for me and then I have my family and I'm starting to have you guys. Today I got asked by this little old lady um, what my support system looks like. And I explained it to her. And on the drive home, I started, I had to pull over. And I started crying. Like, I mean, not pretty crying, like ugly crying. What I want to talk to you guys about today is friendship. What happens to somebody with mental illness and friendships? I started hearing voices around the age of five, six. I told a friend. She told everyone in school. I was no longer her friend. I was now the crazy girl. Fast forward a year, I had a friend. I liked to be affectionate as a friend, and so I held her hand once and her mother told her she couldn't be friends with me anymore because I was a lesbian. I asked her what the voice inside of her head told her to do, thinking, it's her conscience. I believed for so long that the voices in my head were just my conscience. They were not, but... I believed that because that's what I thought a conscience was, was the voice in your head. She told me I was weird and crazy and never spoke to me again. Things, I've had trouble holding on to friends my whole life, but f four friendships in the past ten years have hurt more in loss than the breakup that I suffered after three years. That's not to diminish my heartbreak. That's not to make myself, oh, I don't care about him. No, no, no. Like, I really loved him. I thought I was going to marry him. I thought I was going to have children with him. Anyway, so four friendships. Friendship number one. My high school, when I went to an all-girls Catholic school, I had a group of very close-knit friends. Um, even one of the school counselors called us the Three Musketeers. We were always together. And I had to leave high school. Um, I had to drop out because, one, I got mono. And two, I told my family about my rape. And I lost my... Every, like, I lost my, I lost my shit. That's the only way to explain it. I lost it. Um, I was incapable of, like, getting off the couch for about a year. So in that Three Musketeer relationship, one of the friends stopped calling and then started dating the other friend. Now, I totally supported the two of them. Both of those girls meant the world to me and I I would have supported them through everything 
but then one of them cheated on the other one. And I picked up the pieces. And I told my friend that I was on her side because she'd been cheated on and there was no reason for her to be hurt. And then they got back together and I was the bad guy. Fast forward to now. My friend was cheated on again by the same girl. She, now he, um, came out as transgender. His father passed away. And he was diagnosed, I believe, with bipolar. And I can't reach him. And I want to so badly. I just want to help. I just want to talk to him. I miss him so much every day. Every day I miss him. But, but, that said, that friendship ended. Um, due to a lot of miscommunications and lies and things said behind other people's backs. So that one hurt. That was friendship number one that fell apart. Friendship number two came from high school as well, and we were really close friends, and we stayed close friends after I left school due to my mental breakdown, and she was wonderful, and everything ended when she got an abusive boyfriend. I saw her recently, and I told her I'd still want to be friends if she was up for it. Gave her my number. She won't be calling, and I know that. I'm actually going to only do three because this is just too emotional for me. The third one is the one that really killed me. I had a friend who I'd known since I was 13 and when I told her about my DID, she gave me a hug, said she'd be there. And has never called again. I don't expect friends to be able to handle this. I can barely handle it. But I do expect kindness. And some idea of what I did wrong. So my day-to-day -day life is very lonely. My friendships have been very select and very few that have stuck. And I'm sorry that this is a very depressing video and that it's probably not something you want to know. And geez, if you guys just, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm trying to share what you guys are asking for. And if this isn't what you were asking for, that's okay. You guys can tell me in the comments below and I will try not to make a video like this again but those three friendships have kind of shaped the fact that I've lost a lot of trust in people, in humanity in relationships and that sucks and it sucks that I don't have the support of people that I wish had stayed it sucks that some people have left without an explanation. And yeah, that's normal. That stuff happens. But they all bailed on me when I was in crisis. My close friends in high school left when I got my GED and I was no longer on the proper path. And there was all sorts of other crap going on with that. that the dating of the two of them was just... It was just painful watching one of them get hurt repetitively. The friend who bailed on me when her boyfriend told her that I was no good for her. Cute. But now he's gone and you're still deciding to stay away. So that's your call. And the friend who's now married. Who promised me we'd be friends. 
who promised she'd stand by me. You play a really good person to a lot of people, and I know you truly believe that you are a good human, but abandoning people when they really need you is not what good people do. Maybe it's just a mistake, and it's not evil. Maybe it's just a bad choice. Alright guys, tomorrow I'm going to be posting my April wrap-up. I promise it'll be much happier and much less sad. And you guys, if you want to offer me support, go for it. If you guys think that this is the dumbest video you've ever seen, please let me know and I won't make it again and I'll take it down. Um, but I just, I figured I'd show you guys a low point and kind of talk to you guys about what I think about when I'm in a low point and where my mind goes and what a daily life situation looks like for me and what impact a friendship can have even though you think it may not yeah I guess that's how this video ended I will talk to you guys very soon bye